and welcome to Bellavision News. I'm at City Chavez. And I'm Keyshawn Talley. Thanks so much for watching. We're covering today's breaking news about two arrests being made in connections to last weekend's deadly mass shooting in Dadeville. Alabama law enforcement says they arrested two teenagers Tuesday night. Four people were killed in the rampage in downtown Dadeville Saturday night during a Sweet 16 birthday party. Dozens of others were injured, including at least 15 who suffered gunshot wounds. 17-year-old Tyreek McCullough and 16-year-old Travis McCullough each face four counts of reckless murder. Authorities say both suspects will be prosecuted as adults. This is Alabama. And when you pull out a gun and you start shooting people, we're going to put you in jail. Okay? We're going to do that because we're thinking about the families. We're concerned about the families. We were in the beginning and we will be through the remainder of this investigation because somebody's got to start thinking about mom. Because I know I'm tired of it and everybody behind me is tired of it. We're tired of going to the mothers and having to tell them that these kids are not coming home. The district attorney says additional charges are expected. A motive for the shooting is still not clear. Residents of Dadeville are still coming to terms after the mass shooting this past weekend. Reporter Brady Talbert is in Dadeville with more about the how the community is working to heal. Raven Talbert is unlocking the door to her dance studio just days after at least four people were killed in a mass shooting. There's just no words to, to describe it. Like many in this small city, she is heartbroken and sending her condolences to the victims. Talbert graduated from Dadeville High School in 2016. She knew she had a passion to inspire young minds and wanted to own a studio to do just that. That senior year, you know, when you're a senior, everyone asks you, what are your plans? My, my answer stayed consistent and that was to go to college. I study business, come back and to open a dance studio to serve my community. Something she's done since 2021 until tragedy struck. Imagine picking up the phone and getting a call that there has been a mass shooting at one of your friend's businesses. That was the harsh reality for Ashley Stevens. My mom actually came to my house and called me and was like, hey, I'm about to come inside. And she told me what happened and I just broke down because Raven was the first person I thought of. Stevens went to high school with Talbert, but she says they've been friends for life. In college, she used a class project to highlight her friend's small business. This is that video. After every practice, before events, after events, things like that, she gets her girls in a prayer circle and they pray together. And that I feel like that really shows her character, how much she really does care for these girls. Now, as people process this horrific crime, Talbert waits for a day her studio can once again be a place for positivity. The process is, is just beginning and it's, it's going to take a minute. I do plan to reopen this. This is not going to stop my dreams. In Dadeville, I'm Brady Talbert. We've got extended coverage of the Dadeville shooting and today's arrest on our website at valorvisionnews.wordpress.com. We've also got information about how the victims are being remembered. Turning to campus news, things are heating up down at the Anagama Kilns. Valorvision News reporter Andrew Saris shows us how UM artists are connecting with other kilns around the world. Give that natural. Woo! Yes. Yes. On Tuesday, the University of Montevallo's art department lit its 40-foot Anagama kiln to mark the beginning of the World Fire event. Artists from around the world participate in the baking of their ceramic pieces. Anagama kiln, meaning cave kiln in Japanese, is an ancient kiln used for baking ceramics. Students have been chopping wood since October in preparation for the event. The start of the event is commemorated by a traditional sake toast. The kiln was lit by YC, a visiting graduate student from Taiwan. The event happens under the supervision of art professor Dr. Scott Meyer, who has been with UM for 37 years. I think the students that get involved with it, um, they grow up fast in terms of their ceramic knowledge and their art knowledge in general. It's about students. Students help me build this kiln. The kiln sits in the woods near the student retreat center on campus. Volunteers will supervise the firing for the next five days and shifts. Around 60 pieces sit in the kiln, including some of Dr. Meyer's work. 
you know, we, we get the work out. It's good. It's not so good. It's fantastic. It's every measure you can imagine. The purpose of the event is to get students involved in a rare opportunity to utilize and operate this ancient type of kiln. It's a classroom that's on fire. You're going to find out how flame behaves, how to control it, what it does to work, you know, all of it. And uh, it's a hands-on thing, obviously. You see a bunch of hands right now, and they're on. Reporting for Valovision News, I'm Angel Sears. We want to extend a special congratulations to UM's theater department. Their production of Rent opens today, and tickets for all performance are already sold out. The show runs through next week. Finals weeks are is right around the corner, and the Learning Arrangement Center is helping students study. The LEC offers many different options, tutoring options such as individual, small groups, online, and drop-in tutoring. Tutoring is free for all UM students. For more information regarding free tutoring, visit our website at valovisionnews.wordpress.com. As Gwen Safana would say, it's bananas. The third Wednesday of April is National Banana Day. Bananas are the oldest cultivated and popular fruit in the world. More than 100 billion bananas are produced and circulated around the world each year. Bananas are, the, are a good source of vitamins, carbs, amino acids, and fats. Remember, there's always more news 24 seven on our social media pages. Just search for Valovision News on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for more stories throughout the week. That's all the times that we have for today's show. Thanks for watching and be sure to tune in into Valavision News again next week for our final show of the semester.